Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Um, you've been a very uh, consistent reviewer and critic of literature in Nigeria for so many years. Uh, what led you to that path? Where did your um, love for literature start? I think it started very, very early because when I was very young, I read voraciously. I read a lot. I, I read um, a great deal of works in the English canon, for instance. I also read books written by our writers here. I also read the novels of Dio Fagnois and so on and so forth. So I think that that very, very immersed, that early life immersed in, in books, in the imaginative world, in words, uh, it, it does lead you to a lifelong love affair uh, with words. And I think that's what happened with me. It also, uh, for children especially, you, you, your imagination just soars when you're, like I remember when I was young, if I was reading, I'd go and hide myself in a corner just so that no one would be able to find me and so that this process, whether I was reading uh, Gulliver's Travels and all of that, I, I wanted to just lose myself in that world. It encourages you to dream and I think dreaming is very important eventually to the, to the psyche of what makes a writer. At what point did you decide to tow the path you tow? At what point did you say, this is what I really want to do? I think that, well, I first went into publication in 2003. But all of my adolescent and adult life, people, like you would say something and someone, you would be in conversation like we're in conversation now, and someone would just suddenly go, Oh, how did you put it like, like that? So people always made that kind of comment about the, the, the manner in which I expressed myself, even though for me it was perfectly normal. So that was how in 2003, just someone who thought, wow, I would really love you to, to contribute to my publication, to, to do a column for me. And I didn't want to do it, but he, he was um, adamant that I would be perfect for it. So I wrote the first one, and it just kind of took off from there. So I first uh, made my name, if you could put it like that, writing journalistic pieces about the art world, about literature, writing, writers, about visual art, film. I'm an avid uh, film lover. I'm a film buff. I'm, you could say that I'm a bit of an armchair critic on old Hollywood, not even, <laughs> no, not, I mean, I, 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 know, I, I, I know contemporary Hollywood pretty well, but I also, like from movies from the 18, uh, 19, uh, you, you know what I mean, 1890 onwards, there was a time in my life when I could tell you the, the significant films of the 1930s, the 1940s, I still could, but just not so much. Uh, as before. So, yeah, so it was natural also that I would be a film critic. So that's what I was doing. And then from 2003 to 2006, I had an arts column in The Guardian, The Lagos Guardian, even though I was based in London. And if you love the arts, I think London is one of the greatest cities to be in the world. Okay, let's talk about your new book now, Indigo. Nice title. Tell us about the book, first of all. Well, Indigo is a collection of short stories, 17 short stories set in Nigeria and the UK. Um, some are quite, the, the Indigo comes from the title story, which is the first story in the collection. And so they're just um, fictional writings about, I would say, the Nigerian experience, the condition of, of, of Nigeria dumb. <laughs> so to speak. There's a lot of, uh, I, I would prefer for critics to assess it and say how successfully I've dealt with the themes in there. But uh, some of the stories are set in Nigeria and some are set in the UK where I used to live. And uh, for instance, um, also when I was in the, U most of them, most of the pieces in here were written when I was still in the UK. 
I've been back here in Nigeria for about five years now. I lived in the UK for quite a long time, which I think explains the diaspora stories in there. There are quite a number of stories set in England and quite a number set here. So it's an, I hope it's an interesting mix of Nigeriana mm -hmm. and, and a certain internationalism at the same time. So what really inspired the book? Um, from what you've said now, I'm guessing uh, your experiences in the UK and um, in Nigeria influenced it, but is there any particular thing that, that got you thinking about writing it and writing it the way you've done? Well, I think, you know, a collection of short stories is about many things, and there may be those who may read this and say it's about a thousand and one things. Who knows? Uh, some people might feel that it's about just five things. What inspired the stories? Uh, by the time that I started writing them, I had um, become part of this larger Nigerian writing community, which was not restricted to geography geographical location. So I was based in London. A number of us were based in London. A number of us were, a large number of us were based in the United States. Some were in the Caribbean and quite many were at home here in Nigeria. I was uh, finger pointing the internet for, as one of the reasons for the decline in the reading culture. But we, oh, the irony is that what we as writers have found is that the internet has actually aided the uh, this, this springing forth of Nigerian writing that's happened in the last 10 years or so because over the internet, a lot of us were able to connect. connect. We had a list of Ihide Ikeloa, who I know you've spoken to, might have uh, talked about some of this, over the internet where it was like a bar and we all were there and we discussed the the situation in Nigeria, we discussed our realities, we made friends, we fought, we also critiqued each other's works. And that kind of environment, virtual environment that was made possible on uh, this list of, there was at least one that was the most important and there were a number of others. Uh, it, it helped me, I think, in starting to address certain issues about what it means to be Nigerian at this time. It's tough writing a book. Um, so how, how long did it take you to write Indigo? It's a tough question. It's a simple question, but it's tough in the sense that it, it, took, um, it took a number of years because I don't believe in rushing into print. I think one of the greatest, uh, is it virtues? Is it a virtue? One of the things that a, a writer could learn is patience. And I think if you have patience, it means that you will have more time to hone your craft, to refine your work, to think through the uh, thematic uh, concerns in the work. So they were written over a number of years. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you. Thanks for watching today's show. Don't forget you can join us on any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.